Hey there, welcome to Something About Tabletop. My name is Masterplier, and today I'm going to be doing a topic on what I'm calling, and what I've seen people call, analysis paralysis. So what analysis paralysis is, is when you've got your players um, just talking a lot about a situation to the point where they can't actually make any decisions. It could be because everyone has conflicting views, it could be because... Um, they can't actually agree or no one wants to actually initiate a situation over threat of death, embarrassment, or anything, or, or all of the above. <laughs> and this can really bog down a game. Now, this happens a fair bit in certain game types. Um, definitely more management game types and uh, Shadowrun specifically, mainly because that's where my most experience of this is. It has happened in D&D. I've, in every every system I've been in, it's when the players get an, an amount of time to do whatever they want, uh, or or a puzzle comes up that's way too difficult. So they need to focus all their energy on that, and then people get worried they'll die, and just continuously debate about this, and it just goes on forever. Uh, this can really bog down a game, make it sluggish. I mean, sure, the banter can be really fun at the start, but eventually it becomes all out of character. Um, people won't do anything and it becomes boring you know and maybe you are not able to fill in the time allotted so say if you're in a one like a one shot with the three hour time limit becomes four you know all this kind of stuff and I guess which is why um, at least Shadowrun games in my I usually see they go over time or you need to go into two sessions instead of just one so there's that <sighs> anyway so I guess I just told you what it is but how do you stop it? Now, it depends who you are. If you're the player of the DM, there's different tactics. Now, as a player, in my opinion, you have less control of this in some circumstances, but sometimes you have more control of it. So, the one with the situation you have the most control is when everyone is just arguing and any action, immediate or not, will break the situation and make it move forward. You're, you're doing a trap and someone needs to pull a lever and everyone is arguing who's going to pull the lever. People can't decide on who's going to go first. All this indecision, just just do it. You put your hand up and go, I don't care. And they're like, oh no, you're the mage, you can't. I'm like, well, how about the barbarian does? Because if you guys can't think of a, a way to move forward, then I'm just going to do it. You know, like if your character's impatient or impulsive, go first all the time. It's also more fun that way. You know, don't just do what would be best for the game, do what would be for your character, if that moves the game forward. Now, sure, if you're playing an ultra-passive character that doesn't do that, I guess you can play that out. But if you get into a situation where, you know, the only way to move the game forward is to do something, do it. I know that's probably a little bit controversial, and a lot of people probably aren't happy with that, but... If you can break character to make sure things move forward in the session, do it. In my opinion, like if if you have a really good idea but your character is too dumb to say that idea, sit outside a character and just say, "Hey guys, maybe this would work." And you know, if people say, "Oh, your character is too dumb to know that," just say, "Um, have you got an idea?" Because you know, <laughs> I mean, hopefully no one would do that that you're playing with. But I have seen people do it. Where they're going, "Your character is too stupid to think of that idea. He, you can't do that." And that's stupid. If it moves the game forward, and especially if you're saying that as a GM, I don't know if you actually want your players to succeed. So you really should be saying that. And I'm assuming no one would. That's silly in my opinion. Like, if someone's just got an idea, let it happen. Um, if it's way too out of character, like the player can't communicate. I mean, why are they playing that character? It sounds really boring to me. <laughs> but yeah. Just do everything that you can to move forward. Play in a way that moves the game forward, that creates conflict, that doesn't bog the game down too much. And also, if it gets to a situation where you're having a conflict with another character so much so that the game can't move forward, maybe you should concede what your, like your character should just let the other person win in that conflict, just so the game can move forward. Because seriously, it's just... It can get too much. You know, when you got two players arguing over something, while it's cool at the start, eventually it gets silly, and someone has to budge. Whether that means getting into a fight with another player character, or whatever, just do it. Do what you, you think your character would do, because, you know, you could sit there and argue about something for a million freaking years, and in real life you would just get 
so pissed off and eventually crack. And if you wouldn't, if you would walk in the other direction, if you think your character would leave the party out of an argument, do it. Don't just stay. You know, either play to a character and don't, but I think always moving the story forward because in some ways this is a cooperative storytelling. So you need to cooperate. I mean, your character doesn't have to, but you need to cooperate in creating this experience for everyone. Whether that means breaking the char your character or not breaking character. And if that means fighting another party member, go ahead. Unless, of course, it's pre-said before that no fighting other party members. But, I mean, really, if it works, it works, and I'd be doing that anyway. Um, like, if it was in a Pathfinder... If, if it was in... Not just Pathfinder Society, sorry. If it was in a one-shot game or a Decon, I mean, fighting my party members when it wasn't allowed, if I thought it was in character and would move the game forward, I'd do it. I don't mind if my character died. I'd be like, whatever. Cool, good game. It was fun. And if it creates drama that was interesting, that made shit happen, I did well. Make it memorable. Don't just go, oh, remember when we argued for four hours? Yeah, that was cool. Not many people do that. But remember when we did that cool plan? That was awesome. I mean, especially when you think of plans quickly, that's awesome. In Shadowrun, etc. Alright, next is as a DM, what can you do? Um, if they have NPCs near them, or NPC help, or anything like that, and if they're stuck on a situation, whether that be a puzzle, whether that be on a vote for something, make them chime up and be like, hey guys, uh, this can sometimes seem biased, um, especially when you may be giving other people help more than others, but just do it. Um, if it means moving the game forward, um, creating more fun for the players, getting them into the action, do it. Uh, also, what you can do is um, character knowledge and player knowledge is separate. And may you know, not all players know how to be professional criminals. So sometimes you have to, dr if you think a professional professional criminal or professional adventurer or whatever they're doing would know something, tell them in the head, just to help them. Be like, your character knows this. I mean. Personally, I'm not a fan of going make an intelligence check to solve a puzzle. It's more make an intelligence check for me to even give you a hint. But if you know it's getting to the point, say in a puzzle where they just don't know what to do, give them a hint. If they're in a good negotiation situation where they just totally stumped on how to crack someone, give them a hint. Just tell them, hey, what if you guys tried this? Or you know, just do that in general with whatever they're doing. Um, it can seem cheap, but really, it really helps. It could even be false information that may lead them to real information if you're good enough to think of that quickly. Do it. Get them in the headspace that they need to do it right. Because sometimes you're just in the wrong headspace. So as a DM, you need to guide them. Anyway, another one is if people aren't playing their characters correctly and it's bogging down the game. Whether that be... Um, you know, it's usually when people play impulsive characters and then they don't play impulsive for a little time because they don't want their character to die. Now... If they're going to continue playing their character impulsive and they're not having a change of heart, compel them as it were. Like in Fate, you give them a Fate point. You could give them inspiration, karma, experience points, whatever you want, and go to the player, your character wants to do this, and if you do this, I'll give you this. It seems like bribery, but it moves the game forward. Um, or in general, just say to them, hey, you're not playing your character correctly, you know? I mean... Also, playing towards negatives to make things move forward, like I said before, impulsiveness, things like that. Because I've had situations where players would not want to do their negative qualities because they don't want to die. It's like, oh, but I'll die if I do that. That's going to hurt the party if I do that. Yeah, but it's going to move the game forward. And to be honest, you took that negative quality full well realizing what it's going to bring you. You can't just be drug addicted when it helps you. You know, you're going to take drugs where it doesn't. Whether that be taking crack in the middle of like a ambassadory mission or something like that you know if you get the craving you get the craving you fail that will check you've got to do it some people feel that this takes them out of their preconceived notion of their character but I mean if they put it down on paper you have to play to it because as a DM you're kind of following the rules in that way but I mean if their character is changing a person I mean all these tips it's really what works for your group and to be honest if players start arguing with your decisions to the point of where it becomes analysis paralysis for you and the players, I've just got a feeling your group's probably not the best. Uh, no offense, of course. I mean, conflict happens, but conflict in groups is a whole nother subject. Anyway, I mean, also, like, when I first started doing Shadowrun, um, I had a problem with this analysis paralysis, because I gave players too much to think about. So do you know how I solved it? 
I gave them less to think about. I solved the problems for them at the start. The Johnson saying, hey, I've worked this out for you already. Here is the information. Give them more information. Give them more names. Give them more interesting things to think about. And this all comes with experience, and when you do this, it's going to be easier for them to complete the mission. Obviously, you don't want to make it too simple, and doing this can do that, but it definitely helps. Would this be giving them a helping hand through anything? Like, I mean, something cool to do. I mean, I just thought of this just then. You know, if you have a problem with your players worrying about death too much, give them a way to resurrect each other. Give them an extra healing item, and players will be a little bit more reckless. Because if you make things too stringent, no one will want to do anything, and it'll bog down the game. But remember, ultimately, play the game how you want. And if you like to have analysis paralysis in your games, because it can definitely be super interesting, especially when it's about moral decisions and things like that, having a massive debate in character can be awesome. And let that happen. But when it becomes to the point where everyone is getting sick of it and people just want to play the game, get to the combat encounter, fight the boss, let it happen. And if other players are holding everyone back and trying to overthink things just kind of ignore them and let the other players move the game forward. This sounds kind of shitty, but you know, if you're holding down the game, holding back the story, I think you as a player have failed. And if you're doing that as a DM, same thing. Anyway, hopefully that wasn't too harsh and hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, I am Master Blah. Thank you for listening.